This morning I begin with a question, a response to a question from Lars Jensen of Sweden. What is consciousness? What is consciousness? I have been speaking on this all the time in different ways and means. If you are alert, you will pick up the matter. Though it has not been spoken directly, but it has been always spoken. Your body is energy, your mind is energy, and your soul is energy. This is three layers of energy. Then what is the difference between these three layers of energy? The difference is only of a different rhythm, a different wavelength and that is all. Body has a different wavelength, mind has a different wavelength, soul has a different wavelength. It is the wavelength that determines its visibility. The body is the gross energy, it functions in a gross way and when energy is gross it is a visible phenomenon. Your hand is moving, it can be seen. Your eyeballs moving, it can be seen. Your legs moving, it can be seen because it is a gross phenomenon. On the contrary, both heart and the mind are somewhat subtle, but is still not too subtle because you can close your eyes and you can see the thoughts moving. It is subtle in the sense that you know there are thoughts moving in your mind in the inner sky, but no one else knows. With closed eyes, emotions can be seen floating on the inner sky. Emotional upheaval can be experienced through the body gestures though. But certainly they are not as visible as the movement of the body. The body is visible to everyone. It is publicly visible but your thoughts and emotions are privately visible. Only you can see them or the people who have woke deeply into seeing thoughts and emotions. But ordinarily they are not visible to others. Mind is logic. Mind is thought. All thoughts are logical, rational and complex. Mind has eyes. It can discern. Mind has eyes but it is crippled. Mind can see but cannot move because it does not have legs. Out of mind, philosophies and various kinds of systems are born. The language of the mind is different. Heart cannot understand it. Heart cannot understand the language of the mind. A way arises out of the mind. But all the ways, whether it arises out of the mind or out of the heart, leaves you, leads you away, away from your path. Then there is another layer of energy that flows through the realm of the heart. Heart is blind. It has legs. It has movement. It can move with great speed into unknown realms. It can soar to unknown horizons. It can weave dreams and hallucinate in 
million ways. Out of this another stream emerges. Heart speaks a language, a different language that mind cannot understand. Both heart and mind are like parallel straight lines. They are always together but they never meet. They are like parallel railway lines or the lines that are there on the road separating different lanes. They never intersect one another. Meeting is always impossible. At the most, both can argue, fight, and lament their own suck. Head is barren, nothing grows there. Heart has a fertile soil, but there is no one, no gardener to plant and nourish the growth. This you can see on a day-to-day -day basis. Man represents head in general and woman represents the energy of the heart, the emotions, the sentimentality. The two always argue but never ready to reconcile for any matter. Look at the simple day-to-day -day matter is there any reconciliation or one, oneness? Mark Twain said, East is East and West is West and the twin shall never meet. This is what happens in case of the head and the heart. The energy that flows to the head and the energy that flows to the heart, which is reflected physically through the lives of a man and a woman, a husband and a wife. As husband and wife, there can be no compromise. There can only be argument, discussions, no reconciliation and lovingness never flows. At the most, one can pretend that it is there. Out of head great philosophies and philosophers like Bertrand Russell, Augustine Kant and many others evolved. So too streams of emotions emerged at different forms of bhakti. Different colors, different languages, and different festivities all together. No coordination. Both are searching truth in their own way. Through the heart, you are looking for this truth, and through the realm of the mind, too, you are looking for truth. Truth is indeed beyond both the realm of the head and the realm of heart. Truth remains hidden and inherent behind the truth. Truth remains hidden and inherent behind the two. And truth is harmony, truth is energy, truth alone is consciousness. Truth alone is consciousness. You have asked what is consciousness? Beyond the horizons of the mind, beyond the horizons of the heart, lies the realm of truth. Truth cannot be comprehended with mind alone or with the sentimentality alone. Truth is consciousness. Consciousness is beyond both head and heart. Truth remains hidden and inherent behind the two. And truth is harmony. Truth is energy. Truth alone is consciousness. Indeed, behind, beyond both head and heart, 
is the realm of consciousness. Consciousness is not muddled with thoughts or philosophies or emotions or sentiments. Thoughts and emotions, philosophies and sentiments never reconcile with one another. At the most they can pretend to tolerate one another, but there can be a bridge between them. But certainly there can be a bridge between the two. Witnessing creates the bridge. Witnessing creates the bridge. How can witnessing emerge? How can witnessing emerge? Be mindful of your thoughts. Be mindful of thoughts as these emerge from nowhere and float on the inner sky. Be mindful. Horses are like emotions. If you pay attention to them, they take you on the far away ride and you will forget the real purpose. Riding the horse of the emotion you are gone far, far away, never to return. Thoughts move in circles. Be mindful of thoughts as these emerge from nowhere and float on the inner sky. So to be mindful of emotions and sentiments as these float and frisk gaily on the inner sky, when you interact in the outer world of objects and emotions through the gateways of the mind, through the organs of perception and organs of action, when you interact in the outer world of objects and beings, emotions arise, thoughts arise, both continue to float on the inner sky, out of the mind, out of the thoughts, the realm of the mind, the philosophies emerge. Out of heart, the realm of emotions, sentimentality. Mindfulness creates the bridge. The emotions and thoughts start merging into one another as these meet over the bridge. Meditation weakens. As meditation deepens, harmony happens between the two. Out of this harmony, that which is born is consciousness. Out of this harmony between head and heart, that which is born, know this as your consciousness. Consciousness is your intrinsic quality of oneness and the fragrance of the being. Then comes the third layer, which is inside you. And this third layer, which is beyond the two, not the modification of either of the two. It is beyond emotions. It is beyond thoughts beyond sentimentality. It is the layer of, this layer of energy is called consciousness. It is not even visible to you. It cannot be reduced into an object. It remains the subject. If all these three energies function in harmony, you are healthy, and who? If these energies do not function and accord, you are ill, unhealthy, you are no more whole, and to be whole is holy, and out of this wholeness, out of this wholeness alone, Out of this wholeness alone, alone emerges 
the realm of consciousness. I have heard outside the town in deep forest there lived two beggars. One was blind. He could move with great speed. The other was crippled but he had eyes. But he could not move. And both were competitors. And in business, no one is friend. We are all competitors, competing against one another. So the blind was competing against crippled and crippled was competing against the blind. Two lived outside the village in the forest in a state of total antagonism. Then one day it happened, a fire broke in the forest and there was no way for them to escape. One has the eyes but was crippled, the movement was impossible. The other one was crippled but had the eyes, so he could not move. The other had the movements, the capability of the movements because of legs, but was blind. So they were stuck. In these situations, and luckily they were not Jews, because Jews know how to manipulate a situation. But Jews can never be beggars, and Jews are never beggars. They are master of every situation. They know how to master the situation. So I cannot say these two beggars were, knew anything about the Jewishness to come and compromise in a particular situation. They were suffering in their own lives. Then suddenly they decided to come together. And how they came together? When the blind and the crippled came together, the blind put the crippled on his shoulders, the blind put the cripple on his shoulders and used the eyes of the cripple and the movement of the blind. The journey was possible. The harmony happened between the crippled and the blind. The two moved with great speed and come out of this situation, the fire in the forest. Thus, riding the shoulders of the blind, the crippled showed the direction and the blind used his legs with great speed of them was saved. Such is the situation between the mind and the heart. The heart is blind. It cannot see, it cannot rationalize. It cannot judge. It simply jumps into conclusion without rationalizing it. The conclusions comes out of whims, conclusion comes out of emotional upheaval, em emotions emerge out of frenzy, 
such is the state of the heart it is blind but it has great speed it can move faster than fastest into unknown horizons it can doubt it can move create situations it can cry its heart out but it cannot move but it cannot see it can move with great speed mind can rationalize mind can rationalize mind has eyes to see eyes to see but it is crippled it cannot move when a person is logical he has to decide whether going this way or that way is good he goes in the two ways of argument he can remain hungry deciding and arguing about whether this is good or that is good he can put forward myriad arguments about a particular drink and then it is it remains incapable and hungry when the two comes together bridges formed the blind carries the crippled on his shoulders there is a blend of the harmony blend between the emotion emotions and thoughts the energy of the heart and the mind merges into one another a marriage takes place between the two a communion happens between the head and the heart out of this the offspring of consciousness is born out of this the offspring of consciousness is born consciousness is the communion between the head and the heart when the the movement of the eyes the movement of the emotions is guided by the vision of the crippled thought contents in mind up to now the crippled seer has been the master all the wars have happened because of this crippled seer we have lived in a male oriented society and it is although in this male oriented society women has nothing to do with the wars and all that man has created but it is the women that has to suffer heart creates head creates the problem but the heart suffers woman suffers after the war what happens when a particular territory is invaded and and captured by the enemy camp the soldiers are the first one to enter that land and women are the first target after every war women is the target of those repressed sexuality of the soldiers it is for the heart to create our problems emotions always creates problems but it is for the intellect it is for the energy of the heart to solve them this was one of the quotations 
Now it can be categorized as a quotation happened. When I was working on the project of my books of economics almost 30 years ago, 35 years ago, I was working on certain problems and that time money was scarce. So I used to save all the money in order to fund my books and transport to and fro to the institute and the library. Was trying to solve a particular problem that was a statistical and mathematical in economics was not getting the solution. So I decided to go to the cafeteria and eat something and maybe while eating a thought may a solution may emerge. So I decided to spend as much money as I could and ordered many things. Normally I just used to subsist on bare necessities in order to save the money. As I was ordering and I had ordered it already, the dishes have come, a thought appeared. It is for the heart to suggest the problems and it is for the intellect to solve them. It was like Eureka, I have found it. I ran out of the cafeteria, leaving the money and the change with the waiter. Not eaten the dishes that were ordered. It was Eureka. I came back, continued working. It was early morning snack time and I continued in the library until the midnight hour when the library was to be closed. The bell rings and you have to leave the library. Then we went to the department building and remained there working until next day dinner time when we reached home. So it is the union, it is the communion between the energy of the heart and the head. A marriage is there. A marriage is the communion, a union, a harmony not an ordinary union, union of the bodies, it is not so. All our marriages are performed at the level of the body and remain at the level of the body without creating a bridge between the heart and the emotion, the heart and the head, between emotions and thoughts. And the third, the ultimate layer which is inside you is that of consciousness. It is not even visible to you. It cannot be re reduced into an object. It always remains the subject. If all the three energies function in harmony, you are healthy and whole. You are harmonious. The effort of a master is to help you so that your body, your mind and the beyondness can dance in one rhythm, in togetherness, in a deep harmony, not in conflict at all, but in cooperation. The movement of your body, mind, and consciousness functions together. You become the Trinity. And that 
in that experience of trinity when there is a harmony between emotions thoughts and consciousness and the beyondness you experience god you experience godliness as such there is no relationship between consciousness and energy consciousness because consciousness is the purest energy mind is not pure body is not pure body is mixed mind is also totally not pure consciousness which emerges as the confluence between the energies that flow through the heart and through the air is the purest but you can know this consciousness only if you make a cosmos out of the three not the chaos people are living constantly in the chaos created by sentiments and emotions that is one direction then there is the direction of the mind which is completely oblivious of the body for centuries you have been taught that you are not the body for centuries you have been told that body is your enemy and you have to fight with it body stores all the three realms the realm of the heart the realm of the emotion of the head sufis call the realm of the energy that flows through the heart as nafs lower emotions and the higher emotions and the energy field of the head is called soul it is the emotions that give a great energy and speed to the thought content and to the movement consciousness is the highest form of energy when all these three energies function together then the fourth happens the fourth is always present and inherent between the three when the three functions together when the three function in an organic unity the fourth is always there fourth is nothing but that organic unity in the east we have all this the fourth or turiya gurjeev had called it as the fourth way and he says my way is that of the fourth way we have not given it any name the three have names the fourth is nameless it is formless to know the fourth is to know the essence of your life to know the fourth is to know god is to let the godliness flow through you let us say it in this way god is when we are an organic orgasmic unity between head heart and consciousness God is not when there is chaos, a disunity, a conflict. When you are a house divided against yourself, how can there be God? When you are tremendously happy with yourself, happy as you are, blissful as you are, grateful as you are, and all your energies are dancing together. when you are an orchestra of all the energies when you are a musical symphony of a beautiful all the musical instruments have been tuned into one harmony before any concert begins all the musical instruments 
all the musicians tune their instruments into one harmony that feeling of total unity that feeling of harmony is godliness that experience of godliness is the experience of form of all the three falling in harmony and then the fourth arises the fourth is more than the sum total of the parts the whole is more than the sum total of the parts is expresses to the parts but it is no more the parts to understand this is to understand god god is no more that plus it is not a question of theology it cannot be decided by the logical argumentation you have to learn to feel the beauty learn to feel the music you have to learn to feel the dance the laughter the celebration the festivity and ultimately you have to feel the dance in your body mind and the spirit you have to learn how to play on these three energies so that they all become an orchestra then you are aware that god is not that you see god there is nothing to be seen god is the ultimate seer and this state is witness learn to melt your body mind and the being and consciousness first consciousness arises when the energy of the body and the mind merge into one another you are mindful of your thoughts you are mindful of your emotions out of this mindfulness the third arises which is your consciousness and when the three the emotions the thoughts and the consciousness the beyond that the merger of the two the mother the father and the offspring are in harmony with one another the fourth the witnessing arises this is your awareness find out when the can function as unity it happens many times that a runner you will not think of running as a meditation but runner sometimes have felt a tremendous experience of meditation so first you asked what is consciousness consciousness is the beyondness of emotions and thoughts the sentimentality and the ideologies when the two merge into one another as an organic harmony consciousness is born this comes through mindfulness when you observe your thoughts without being carried away when you observe your emotions without being carried away then out of this union the offspring of consciousness is born when the three the father this the mother the father and the offspring are in harmony with one another then as the meditation deepens witnessing happens and when witnessing is happening something happens and that is the greatest joy my effort is to make this mindfulness this witnessing to be possible to each one of you but you have to walk on your own feet i can only show you the direction in many ways i spoke on mindfulness i spoke on witnessing 
the entire diamond sutra is mindfulness and witnessing my effort is to make meditation available witnessing and mindfulness available to each and every one of you whosoever wants to meditate meditation should be made available according to his time if he needs rest then be mindful of rest and rest should be in his meditation then sitting silently doing nothing the spring comes and the grass grows by itself that will be his meditation we have to find as many dimensions to meditation as there are people in the world and the pattern has to be has not to be rigid because no two individuals are same the pattern has to be very liquid fluid like so that it can fit with each and every individual in the past the practice was that individual has to fit with the pattern i bring a the revolution the individual has not fit has not to fit with the pattern instead the pattern has to fit with the individual this is out of respect for the individuality i am not concerned with the means means can be changed a range in different ways that is why there are so many methods there is much difference between awareness and witnessing witnessing is a still an act you are doing it the ego may be there so the phenomena of witnessing is divided between the subject and the object witnessing is the relationship between the subject and the object awareness is absolutely devoid of any subjectivity and the objectivity first when you become mindful of your thoughts and emotions remember you are becoming mindful out of this consciousness is born when consciousness deepens it goes through its various layers that i have spoken the other day the unconscious layer the collective unconscious the cosmic unconscious the three stages below the x axis and then the three layers the consciousness the collective consciousness and cosmic on cosmic consciousness then consciousness attains totality out of that witnessing happens witnessing happens first as a relationship between the subject and the object and then when the diversity of the subject and the object vanishes witnessing becomes awareness awareness is absolutely devoid of any subjectivity or objectivity there is no one who is witnessing in awareness there is no one who is being witnessed in awareness awareness is a total act integrated the subject and object are not related in it they have dissolved so awareness does not mean that anyone is aware nor does it mean that anything is being attended to this is what the ultimate flowering is and light it is happening through you it is happening to you and through you it is happening that you are becoming aware that entire cosmos is and light the birds this is what lala ji had experienced he said that he saw the stars the planets and everything dancing in ecstasy 
all men and women, the stars, the planets, the sun and the moon dancing in one harmony. This is the experience of totality that is happening through you. There is no one who is witnessing in awareness. There is no one who is being witnessed. Awareness is a total act, integrated. The subject and object are not related in it. They are dissolved. So awareness does not mean that anyone is aware, nor does it mean that anything is being attended to. Awareness is total. Total awareness is total. Total subjectivity and total objectivity as single phenomena. While in witnessing a duality still exists between object and subject. Awareness is non-doing. Witnessing implies a doer. Awareness is non-doing. Witnessing implies a doer. But through witnessing awareness is possible. Because witnessing means that there is a conscious act. It is an act but conscious. You can do something and be and remain unconscious. Our ordinary activity is unconscious actions. You are moving forward, you are hanging your key bunch, you bring it back but you do not know where it is. You do not know where your necktie is or where your glasses are. The act of putting it has been an unconscious act. All your actions are unconscious activity. But if you become conscious in it, it becomes witnessing. Through being conscious of your actions, through your day-to-day -day activities, you are coming home, you hang your key, you hang your stick, I have heard there was a philosopher in the college where I used to study. He was the first principal. It is said that he used to walk with a stick in his hand and every day he will come to the classroom, he will put his stick in the corner and then come and sit down on the chair in front of the table placed for him and then his talk, his class, his lecture will begin. One day it was seen that he came, he put the stick on the table and he stood up in the corner. This is the act of unconsciousness. Does not matter how much you claim that you are meditative, how hard meditation you are doing. If you are not conscious of your actions, it is all futile. Meditation has not happened. Witnessing has not yet happened. So from the ordinary unconscious activities to awareness, there is a gap and that can be filled with witnessing. Witnessing is a technique, a method towards awareness. And witnessing happens through being conscious of small things. The, as the words emerge out of you, you are aware of the energy field that these words create. And what will be its impact on the listeners when they listen? It is not awareness, but compared to ordinary activity, Unconscious activity, it is a higher step. Something has changed. Activity has become conscious. Unconsciousness has been replaced by consciousness. And something more is still has to be changed. That is, the activity has to be replaced with inactivity. That will be the second step. 
it is difficult to jump from ordinary unconscious action into awareness it is possible but it is arduous so a step in between is helpful if one begins by witnessing conscious activity then jump becomes easier jump into awareness without any conscious effort without any conscious subject without any conscious activity at all it does not mean that awareness is consciousness it is pure consciousness first consciousness is purest form of energy and awareness is the purest form of consciousness when it is it has led from act in the beginning it begins with action begins with conscious action and then when it reaches the ultimate it becomes actionless action what lawse calls who we who the action without action the inaction in action then the consciousness attains the purest form and awareness is the purest form of consciousness it is pure consciousness but no one is conscious about it there is a further difference between consciousness and awareness consciousness is the quality of your mind but it is not your total mind consciousness is a quality of your mind but it is not your total mind your mind can be both conscious and unconscious but when you transcend your mind you attain to the state of no mind the state of thoughtlessness there is no unconsciousness and no corresponding consciousness the consciousness disappears and then there is awareness awareness means that total mind that the total mind has become aware now the old mind is not there and there is the quality of being conscious awareness has become the totality mind itself is now part of the awareness we cannot say that mind is aware we can only meaningfully say that mind is conscious awareness means transcendence of the mind so it is not the mind that is aware it is only through transcendence of the mind through going beyond the mind that awareness alone is possible consciousness is the quality of the mind and awareness is the transcendence it is going beyond the mind mind is such is a medium of duality so consciousness can never transcend duality it is always conscious of something and there is always someone to be conscious so consciousness is a part and parcel of the mind and the source of all duality when you are non dual so awareness means a state of no mind the non duality then the transcendence happens you are aware comes as a consequence of consciousness you cannot practice witnessing you can only practice being conscious and unconscious you can only practice to be conscious and in that witnessing happens witnessing comes as a consequence as a seek as a shadow as a result as a by product the more you become conscious the more you are going into witness the more you are a witness the more possibility of awareness is there so consciousness is a method to achieve witnessing and the second step is that witnessing will become a method to achieve awareness so these are the three stages consciousness witnessing and awareness consciousness witnessing and awareness awareness is the end of a spiritual progress awareness is the end of a spiritual progress in awareness you lose witnessing and only witnessing remains 
in awareness you lose the witness only witnessing remains you lose the doer you lose the subjectivity you lose the egocentric consciousness then consciousness remains without ego the circumference remains without the circumference remains without the center the circumference without the center is awareness this then consciousness remains without ego this or circumference remains without the center this is the miracle this circumference without the center is awareness consciousness is without any center without any source without any motivation without any source from where it come the no source consciousness is awareness so you move from unaware existence that is matter prakriti towards awareness you may call it divine the godly or whatsoever you may choose to call it between the matter and the divine the difference always is of consciousness witnessing is the purest consciousness only this much for this morning's talk Thank mm-hmm. you.